everybody, my name is Lindsay, and this is my service dog, Kismet. <laughs> um, he is a standard poodle, and he is a very good boy. He's two years old. Um, I've seen a lot of videos online of service dogs, day in the life of a service dog, that kind of thing. And I just thought it'd be really fun to do something like that myself. Um, like I said, Kismet is a two-year-old standard poodle. He is my autism service dog. I am 28, almost 29 years old, and I have trained Kismet to help me to deal with my autism. Um, he has helped me to be able to achieve my dream of going to college at Brigham Young University, Idaho. We started in January of, two th of 2020, but as you all know, things kind of went downhill in like April. So we had to come home, but we will be going back in September this year of 2020. And so I just kind of wanted to do a little bit of an introduction video, kind of tell you guys who I am, how I got kismet, that kind of thing. So I was diagnosed autistic when I was about 16 or 17 years old. And at first I had a really hard time accepting my diagnosis, but once I did finally accept and understand that I am autistic, I started doing a lot of research on it and started realizing that I am autistic and that there's a lot of things that I have to deal with and there's a reason and I'm not crazy and I'm not stupid and there's all these things. So once I accepted my diagnosis, I started thinking about things that could help me to cope and to do better. Um, I have never really liked doing things that everybody else does. Um, I'm a very unique person. I try to be as independent as I can, but being autistic, that's a really big struggle for me because I have a lot of executive di dysfunction, which I can explain in another video. I also have a lot of sensory processing issues, which is my biggest issue that I have is sensory processing for me, which means that I can very easily get overwhelmed. My senses are very heightened, so I can get sensory overload very easily. Um, so because of that, I have a really, really hard time going places by myself and just being a general independent adult. Um, I couldn't really go shopping or go to the doctor or anything like that without having one of my parents with me, usually my mom, just because I just couldn't do it by myself. And I knew that if I was ever gonna have any hope of being an independent adult, I was going to have to find some way to cope. So, I started to learn what my triggers were and how I could avoid them and how I could help self-regulate myself, things I could do to help myself to get through. Um, but there was a lot of things that I was not able to do on my own. For example, I applied to BYU-Idaho, I think two times, and I was accepted both times. But as soon as I started actually preparing and looking at housing and looking at classes and stuff like that, I just had this existential dread, like horror, that I could not do it by myself. Because at that time, the only thing that could help me get through a meltdown or through sensory overload was my mom. And I can't take my mom to college with me, you know, but she would give me deep pressure. She would put weight on my shoulders. She would give me a big, deep hug. And she was the only thing that could help me. And so... I was like, all right, I have to find something else that can help me. I tried anxiety medication for a while, anxiety and depression medication, and that did help take the edge off a little bit, but there was still that sensory overload, that dread of being by myself in a place where I knew absolutely no one and having a meltdown, and I could not deal with that. So I started looking into service dogs. I've always loved dogs from the time I was like a toddler. I've been training dogs, or trying to, <laughs> so... I started looking into service dogs, but as it turns out, there's not very many programs out there that will train a dog for an autistic adult. And I was an adult at the time because I was 18. Um, so I was technically an adult. And a lot of programs train for autistic children, which is great, but they don't train for autistic adults, which in my opinion is a little odd because adults need more independence than children. So I kind of gave up for a little while, for a couple years. I was like, I, I can't do this, I can't train my own service dog, I know how much work it is, and I just don't think I can do it. So, I kind of gave up for a little while, and then I found this program at my community college. It was like a canine handling certificate, and there was um, canine psychology classes, and just basic canine health classes, and things like that. And I was like, I want to do this, because I love dogs, and this would just be awesome for me. 
the first night of class, the teacher said she had a service dog program and that she helped people in the area find dogs that would be helpful for them and to train them to be service dogs. And so I met with her after class and I let her know my situation and she was like, yes, you do qualify for a service dog and you could use one and I will help you. And I was just absolutely thrilled. This was about, I think, four or five years ago that this happened. And I was just so thrilled. I was like, all right, a dog can help me. This is going to be amazing. So we found this dog. She was a scruffy little mutt named Casey. Um, I think she's like a poodle schnauzer, pitbull, something kind of mix. I don't know. But started training her with this program, the service dog program that's local in my area. And I got about a year and a half into training with her. And I realized that she just wasn't cut out to be a service dog. She is excellent. She loves to help me at home. But in public, she's very, very distractible. And she just, the second somebody would give her any attention, I would lose all attention. And I just couldn't get her focus back. And that's just not good for a service dog. She just wasn't enjoying working for me in public because she likes a lot of people and she just wants to play with other people. And that's great. And that's not a bad thing for a pet, but for a service dog, it just wasn't working for me. So I decided to retire Casey before she was all the way finished with her training. And that was really hard for me because I had a few moments with Casey where I realized that a service dog absolutely could help me. There was one day in particular I remember that I was at work and I worked in a special needs classroom and Casey would come to work with me. And there was one day in particular when I was just really overwhelmed and I went out to my car and I ended up having a meltdown and Casey helped me through it. Meltdowns for me usually last anywhere from half hour to an hour, maybe longer. And the recovery time can be like an entire day sometimes. But with Casey's help, I was able to get through that meltdown in about five to 10 minutes. And in five to 10 minutes after it was over, I was completely recovered and fine and ready to go back to work. And the way that she helped me was with doing deep pressure therapy and tactile simulation and things like that. And I will share that more in a task video at some other point. But at that point, I realized that a service dog could really, really help me and I could be independent because I wouldn't have to worry about being alone with my meltdowns anymore because a dog could help me through it. But so it was really hard for me to retire Casey, but I decided that it was best for her. I still do have Casey and she's an amazing dog. Um, so I started looking into puppies because originally I'd been looking at shelter dogs, which are amazing and they can be great service dogs for some people but it just wasn't working out for me and so I decided my best bet was going to be to find a well-bred puppy. So I started looking into breeders. I actually found a golden retriever breeder that lives about 15 minutes from me and she is incredible and she has taught me so much about well-bred dogs and quality bred dogs and things like that. Um, but I got on the waiting list for one of her puppies, golden retrievers, and I started waiting and I waited and waited and waited, and I think it was about a year and a half that I'd been waiting for just the perfect puppy because as a service dog, you know that you have to have just the right dog to do it. And so it was about a year and a half and the right puppy just didn't come up and the timing just was never right and it just wasn't working out. So I was like, all right, maybe I'm not supposed to get a puppy from her. Maybe I'm supposed to have a different breeder. Maybe I'm even supposed to have a different breed. And so I started doing research and I had never really done research on breeds before as far as a service dog. I knew that breed research was important, but I hadn't really thought about it for a service dog. So I started doing research and in my research, I realized that Golden Retriever might not actually be the best breed for me as a service dog. They do make great service dogs and they are one of the top four popular breeds for service dogs because they are very good for it. But for me, I wanted a dog that was going to be a little more focused on me rather than I love everybody like golden retrievers tend to be. I also wanted a dog that didn't shed so much because once I thought about it, honestly, I don't know if I could deal with the shedding of a golden retriever because they do shed a lot and sensory wise, I think that would be kind of difficult for me. So I had this random idea to look at standard poodles and I used to hate poodles. I used to think they were prissy dogs, that they were ugly, that the clean face, shaved face, shaved feet was just the ugliest thing. And I was like, I don't want a poodle, but I started researching the breed and I was like, all right, maybe this is a good breed for me for a service dog. And poodles are becoming more popular for service dogs. Um, they're very smart and intuitive and kind of tuned into their one person. 
So I was like, okay, I'll find this. I'll start looking at poodle breeders. So I posted on Facebook, just kind of putting feelers out. I was like, is there any service, any standard poodle breeders in the area that I am looking into getting a service dog puppy and I'd like a well-bred poodle? And I, within like a couple hours of that post, I found this woman who ended up being Kismet's breeder. Um, she said that she had a litter born just a couple weeks ago and it was a very small litter. There was only two in the litter. And so she didn't let any, she hadn't let her normal people know about it because it was a small litter and she wasn't color, sure what colors she was gonna get. And so she just could, had not really advertised the litter. And so she's like, yeah, I think one of these dogs would be perfect for you. And I got talking to her and as it turned out, she actually has a service dog that's a poodle. Her daughter has a service dog that's a poodle. And so she knows service dogs and she knows poodles. It was perfect. It was a kismet situation. And so it was just serendipity. And so the puppies were only about three weeks old when I talked to her. So about two weeks later, I was able to go down and meet them when they were about five weeks old. And there was kismet and then there was his brother, which was a little red puppy. And I got there and the puppies were kind of still asleep, started talking to the breeder, puppies started waking up. So I sat on the floor, red puppy was just couldn't even care less that I was there. It was just wandering around, doing his own thing. Kismet came up to me and just started licking my face and nibbling on my nose and my chin. And I was like, all right, you chose me, you're my puppy. So I had to wait another five weeks because he was only five weeks old. So five weeks later, when he was 10 weeks old, I was able to bring him home. And from that day on, my life changed. Um, he's only two years old, but I feel like I've had him forever. And like he's always been a part of my life because he's just so amazing um there's so many things that he's been able to do for me like i said earlier um we have been able to go to college together this past january and i was just it was incredible it is such a good experience and i can't wait to get back but with his help i've been able to do so much more than i ever thought i could so that is just a little bit about me and about kismet and I plan to make future videos about his tasks and about his gear that I use because I am what I call a gearholic. Uh, I have a lot of, he has a lot of different gear and I actually make and sell gear too. So um, I ended up getting an embroidery machine just to make gear because I'm so obsessed with it. <laughs> so he has a lot of different gear, so I'll do a video on that. Um, I think it'd be really fun to do some uh, day in the life of a service dog videos, so we'll do some of those. But I just wanted to do a quick little introduction video to just kind of let you guys know that this is what we're going to be about. I'm just going to do some videos um, about Kismet and I and how he helps me. So thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or if you have any video suggestions, please let me know in the comments and I will gladly take those into consideration. Thanks so much.